I mean, you are Echo. You are a sweet kid, a brilliant spark in the Undercity, but you also have a penchant for exploiting people, which is something you've kind of taken from all of your years from working at Old Man Benzo's, which is basically like a pawn shop down in the Undercity, and I'm surprised he doesn't have his own TV show already. But this is all demonstrated when a man comes down, he basically is looking for some, what you guys think is junk, but you still charge him an exceptional price for it. And you think, if I can charge an exceptional price for something, maybe he doesn't care about his money. And if he doesn't care about his money, maybe he's good to get robbed. So you go and rob him, or at least you go and get the intel to go and rob him, and then you tell your best friends, the other orphans of Zorn, Vibe, Powder, Clagger, and Milo. You basically tell them where to go, you do the reconnaissance, and then you kind of hope for a little kickback later, but it's not really an obligation. So when Clagger comes round with Vanda after going up top and you hear about some commotion that happens, a uh, house was destroyed maybe, you're like, okay, maybe Clagger's, uh, maybe, maybe Clagger's had a bit of a rough time. And then he pulls down his goggles and he's basically been punched up. You're like, oh, did you do get that from the enforcers? Nah, man. Nah. Like, okay, and then you just show him some of your moves, you show him that you've been practicing your boxing with Vi because you know you want these guys to respect you you want these guys to treat you like they do powder and take you along on these missions maybe one day but then during your boxing session you kind of spy two enforcers coming down in the distance and out of the fog and you're like oh mm -hmm, Clagger's probably a little bit in trouble so you quickly shoot him along make sure he gets out of the way these enforcers they come in you play it cool but you know what you really need to do you need to go and eavesdrop on old man Benzo something you do on the regular there is no information that comes into old Benzo Benzo's that you don't already know yourself. And I don't think Benzo knows that you know. But anyway, you use this little spy hole that you invented yourself because you're a genius and you watch the whole thing unfold. You find out <laughs> that Vanda had a deal with the enforcers and what happened up top broke their deal. And now the enforcers are going to come down with all of the force of Piltover and destroy the lanes until they get what they want. Vanda is like, oh, I can't let you do that. But I also can't let you take the people that did this. But you also find out that the house that they blew up belonged to a group of people called the Kiramans, and you don't know what that means, but it sounds really important. So maybe, maybe you're done goofed. <laughs> maybe when people have too much money, they don't care about it. They're probably pretty important. But anyway, you feel kind of guilty because you're the one that gave this intel to Vi Powder and Clagger and all that. So you feel a bit upset. You feel like you need to go and tell them what's up, give them a little heads up just in case things go south. So you run over to Vanda's and you're like, man, things have gone wrong. Vanda had a deal with Piltover and now that deal has gone south. They think maybe we need to lay low for a little bit, but you go back home because you don't want anything else to do with this. You just want to be left alone. So you go back to Old Man Benzo's and you wait and you wait. And then after a while, Vi comes in and then she gets put down in the basement. The same two enforcers come back and they're basically going to take Vanda away. Vanda is going to take the fall and you're a bit worried about that but you know Vanda's a tough guy he, he'll survive right and you know they'll still have old man Benzo to take care of the lanes but the lanes would be sorely missed without Vanda because he kind of keeps that ship together but anyway he gets arrested it doesn't feel good but there's not much you can do you know you're a kid so all you could do is watch on when they go outside and lurking in the darkness something comes out and in one fell swoop completely takes apart the lead enforcer lady everyone's in shock you're in shock you have no idea what just happened so you you cling to the side of that building and you just keep watching next thing you know this man saunters out from the darkness the only thing visible is this glowing eye that he should probably cover with a bandage or something or an eye patch because it is absolutely gross. But anyway, Benzo recognizes him and calls him Silco and charges out after him with a metal pole. Next thing you know, he's on the ground. He's he, he's he's been completely gutted by this Dollar General Viego looking creature that looks like they've been taking purple steroids that doesn't seem right but now there are two people dead on the floor and all of the enforcers you see look around you are also dead and the only people remaining are one enforcer and vanda and that that ugly no eye patch guy anyway this purple monster picks up vanda like a ragdoll and takes him somewhere which you just about figure out where it is so when you go downstairs and you see vi she's still there thank god she didn't get taken you spill the beans you tell her what happened and she gets this look in her eyes that she's gonna go and fix that problem. And you hope for the best, but you don't wanna get messed up in that. You're gonna stay there in old Benzos and just wait for everything to blow over. You know, tomorrow will be a better day. Days passed, weeks passed, months passed. Now you go to Vanda's bar, no one's there. There's no Vi, there's no Clagger, there's no Milo. No one came back that night. So of course, the only thing that happened is this Silco guy 
killed them. And so you burn that name into your brain and you will never forget it so long as you live. Silco, the man who killed your whole family. But as you're wandering the streets of Zorn as the old orphan that you are, you come to a place, a tree is in the middle of the, the undercity, this glorious tree, a huge tree. And you think, if a tree can survive down here, maybe I can too. If a tree can live in this mess, in this squalor, maybe I can survive as well. And so from that moment onwards, you decide that you are going to dedicate your life to stopping Silco so the Undercity can survive. And you create a band of thieves, a band of rapscallion youths for the sole purpose of defeating Silco and getting free of Shimmer. And you call that the Firelights because you want to light the fire of the Undercity's new age. A lot of years passed and one day you're doing a regular thing where you're stopping one of the shimmer supplies coming into the Undercity. You know, it's a regular day, you're gonna ice up some people, torch the product and get out of there. But you didn't anticipate that Jinx was gonna be there too, of all people. And this is always a touchy subject for you because Powder is the only person that you knew survived and she ended up running with Silco. And for all these years, you've harbored a resentment for that. And you just know that that powder that you loved is no longer there. All that's left is Jinx. But she single-handedly takes care of your entire group and actually rips the mask off one, revealing her to be a vile lookalike. And in a moment, what looks like madness kills her. You're taken aback. You're this person you love. This is like one of your, your band of merry people taken from you by this person that is now running with the man that killed your whole family. You feel completely heartbroken. So in a blind fit of rage, you run at her as fast as you possibly can, hoping that you could at least give her a little f***ing clout, one of your guys takes you away. So you take a moment to step back and assess what just happened. Jinx's presence means that Silco really needed that shipment to work and the size of the shipment as well means that something big is about to happen and Silco is likely preparing for something massive, which makes you a bit anxious because you don't know what that means for the lanes. A lot of people, a lot of innocent people will die because of this. So you do what you do best. You get more people on the ground, you get more eyes and ears on the ground and you make sure that nothing happens in the lanes without your full knowledge of. One day you get some intel though. A pink haired girl is running around the lanes with a topsider and this girl looks suspiciously a lot like Vi. So you keep watching her, keep checking on her every move because if it is Vi, where has she been all this time and why is she suddenly back? You know, she's been gone since you were a kid. It's been so many years, so it's better to keep your eyes on her and make sure she doesn't do anything really stupid. You watch her get into a fight with Silco and she punches down an entire steel structure with her bare fist and you're just like, that's impressive. And in the commotion, you see Jinx of all people light up a flare, probably to signal to Silco that she needs his help, but Silco doesn't go. It seems like Silco doesn't know about it. Instead, who goes is Vi and you're thinking to yourself, Vi is working with Jinx this whole time. I knew I couldn't trust her. So you guys start doing your thing where you're going to take care of these two threats, both at the same time but as you're fighting the two people you start to realize that Vi doesn't seem like she understands what's going on and she's quite genuinely shocked at the acts that Jinx is actually doing so maybe they're not together when one of your guys is about to kill Vi you told him to step back a little bit and you go back to the tree in that moment you find one of your firelights has actually managed to steal a gem this blue shiny little gem from Jinx and you're thinking this is curious what is this all about? And you have now two people that you might think have the answer to that. So you tie them up and you begin to prep them for interrogation. And when you pull fire aside, you're not gonna let this moment go to waste. You're gonna make this as melodramatic as possible. You're gonna sit there, not reveal yourself for the longest period of time. It's kind of cringe, but you love wallowing in the cringe because you think that it's vaguely intimidating. And when you take off that mask, you realize, oh, I am never ever putting that mask on again. That shit was hot. You open with the line, you look good for a dead girl. And she is completely bewildered by your face. All she utters in return is, Echo? And I mean, she really doesn't look like she even remembers you. And maybe your suspicions are true. Maybe she has no idea what the hell is going on. What do you know about this? And you show her the purple gem. She's just as confused as you are. I have no idea what that is. Then you, you start with another question. You know, you gotta keep the jabs going. Are you running with Jinx? You mean Powder, right? That's her name. Literally just found her before you and your bat-eared freaks took me away. And then she follows up with her, it's me. Vi. And then she gave you that embarrassing story that you've tried to repress all your life about her hosing you down when you got a little bit too greased up. And when she saw your 
little man. It seems like she doesn't really know anything about what was going on with Jinx, what was going on with Silco. It looks like she was completely in the dark about all of it. And you tell her that that story was a long time ago. You're a bigger boy now and you've changed. <laughs> Everyone changes. But you also don't trust anybody. So it's still a bit of a shock when you're seeing this person and all these old emotions are coming up. You're starting to feel like she could betray you. So you follow up with, are you working for Silco? And she basically gives you the verbal equivalent of a middle finger. What happened all these years? And why are you running around with a pilty? And she's like, were you following me, man? Like that's, that's like stalker behavior. Do, do you have a crush on me, bro? You know, I don't run that way, right? I, I'm, I'm crushing on this girl over here. And you're just like, man, of course I follow you. I'm Echo. That's what I do. I follow people. How do you not know me yet? So you just follow me and then you come out swinging. Yeah, I learned exactly that from you. You punch like a little boy. Well, you still block with your face. But the emotions get the better of you. You know, you haven't seen this girl for so many years and now she's here in front of you. She's living and she's breathing. A person that you thought was dead. So when she breaks through those handcuffs, and wraps you in her arms you bawl like a little boy because you really thought that you were the only person that still was alive from that night and so after all of that she basically says that her and the Pilty need to go. They need to go back topsides and they need to make sure that everyone knows exactly what happened down here. And you're like, okay, can I trust this Pilty? Yeah, of course you can. You can trust this Pilty. You don't like that, but you trust Vi. You trust Vi's judgment. You know she's a good person. And from all metrics, she's a fantastic person to have in moments like this. And so you show her the tree and everything that you've built around here because, you know, you love her. You love her like a sister and you respect her and you explain all of the things that happened over over the years since she was gone and also you tell her that there is no powder anymore there's only jinx to which she says no my sister's still in there i can reach her you naive little girl you haven't been running the lanes for the last like 10 years like powder is gone man get it into your head but she seems adamant about the whole idea and you're like okay whatever i'll let you dig your own goddamn grave but she needs to see the cost she needs to understand the cost of everything that you sacrificed so you show her the mural of all of the people that have died and all of the sacrifices that you made along the way so this part of the Undercity can prosper. This is the price of freedom. And you also hope by showing the damage that Jinx has done that maybe she won't get it into her head that she needs to go and fight Jinx. But you know, you never know. It, it is Vi we're talking about here. So you untie the Pilty and you basically drag her out and you're like, okay, I'm going to give you a pass back topside and that is it. And she accuses you of killing enforcers. But you have to remind her that you're just doing your job. You're trying to prevent Silco from blowing up people and killing people and running shit shimmer down in the lanes. She's just a topsider. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's living up there in the city of progress while we're down here in the dumps living the hard life. She doesn't know anything of what she's saying. So you show her the gem and she tells you it's basically something that powers hex tech stuff. That gem is really important. And you're like, great, this is a weapon I can use to destroy Silco then, isn't it? And she's like, look, man, I would respect the hell out of you if you stole that gem. But if you do that, then the violence from Piltover will never stop. We will hunt you till the ends of the earth for this gem. And if you don't give it back to us, this gem will always lead to more blood. And this city doesn't need more blood, it needs more time to heal. And you're like, wow. <laughs> Okay, man, by this girl's pretty cool, isn't she? She knows how to make a speech. <laughs> so you take them up topside, and on the way there, Vi's like, I'm gonna go and say powder. And you're like, oh my god, Jesus Christ, Vi, like, literally, I'm telling you it's Jinx. It's only Jinx. Jinx is the only thing that, rem that still remains here. No, I gotta go do this. this. This is for my family. And that's when you're like, okay, you hug her goodbye because you're never gonna not hug her goodbye ever again and this time it can actually be a real goodbye because you don't know if you're gonna see her again and as soon as Vi is gone bright light scorches your retinas and you wish for an instant that you could go back in time so the, the point where you actually had vision as an enforcer approaches you recognize him as that guy from the shop at benzo's all those years ago and you're like this is bad this is bad that is until the moment where he whips out a pistol and shoots you in the chest knocking you out cold as you're lying there fireworks seem to pop up all around you and you're just like oh is it New Year's already? You don't wake up until you hear someone humming a sea shanty and you're like, oh, Jinx, you are the most cliche villain that has ever existed, aren't you? So you jump off to the side, see what you can do, see what you can achieve and just kind of, you know, do the whole reconnaissance thing. You may you may find a moment to jump in at some point. When Jinx opens fire onto Vi, you're like, oh, Jinx is completely nuts. And 
Vi is definitely not against me. So you take this moment to get your revenge on Jinx. You charge forward, you knock that girl down, and you take the gem and you toss it to Vi in the top side, and you tell them, go. And that's when you're like, well, I gotta fight Jinx now, don't I? And even after all these years, even after all of the fights you've had already, even after her becoming Jinx, she's still like your sister. She still feels like family when you look at her face. So you try and make it a little bit less serious. You whip out your pocket watch and you start this whole thing, this whole game you used to do as a kid and you charge after her. But this is real life, it's not childish games as you slug her face with a metal wrench and you watch her entire body just crumple to the ground and you just jump over her and are greeted by the face of fear and for a minute you think oh is, is powder still exist in these eyes that is until she rolls open her fist and you see a bomb right there next to you and this thing you know you're dragging yourself out of the river and pulling yourself up and hiding in one of these pillars. And then next thing you know, this really tiny fur creature just appears out of nowhere and it starts inspecting your hoverboard. And you're like, Professor Heimerdinger, is that you? And he's like, oh, what's up lad? What are you doing here? Um, I'm, I'm kind of in a bad way. I, I've, I sprained my ankle. You sprained your ankle? Your bone is sticking out of your shin. So Mr. Heimerdinger, why, why are you here? Oh, I was trying to see if I could help people down in the lanes. Why? Like, don't you have like important, like, professor business to do? And he just kind of palms you off and he's like, let's get you some help. And you're like, okay, well, at least he can help me get back down to the tree. And so you go back down to the tree and you're thinking to yourself, okay, so Heimerding is now here. And you, he, he kind of marvels at everything that you've built, saying things like, wow, this is incredible. This is amazing. Like, how did you do this in your lifespan? You can kind of see the wanderlust in his eyes. And you're like, man, it's not just about surviving. It's about living. But before we get to the theory about season two, I just want to give my gratitude to my members, especially Lavender, Yuri, and Alan. Uh, but also to tell you, I have not seen the Lakes of Arcane season two. Um, and if you want to spoil it for me, go ahead, but I will delete your comments. I don't care about spoilers. I spoil myself on One Piece every single week. So what does that mean for Echo? Well, Echo is basically Jace's counterpart at this point. He is now going to become kind of the protege of Heimerdinger. And they're going to work together to basically stop the arcane from happening and develop the Z drive. And the Z drive is going to be one of the most important technologies in all of arcane season two. And now with Silco dead, there's a power vacuum that's going to be taken up by Jinx and Savika. And at some point in the story, him and Jace will have to work side by side and form a bond together as they start trying to defeat Jinx. There'll be a bonding of Piltover and the Firelights because of Vi. And then eventually Heimerdinger will probably end up giving his life because it has been a strong motif of sacrifice. Uh, check out my Heimerdinger video for that one. To summarize, Echo is going to be so important because he represents humanity's struggle. The struggle against aristocracy, the struggle against people of crime. He represents trying to bring hope of a new generation in a world that is fraught with danger and fraught with war where life is hard and everything that you have is hard for and everything that you do is with difficulty and struggle and is that capacity to always fight to always try to survive and to always love no matter how much life throws at you he represents the best of humanity a kind soul that has been beaten and abused but still tries its best to do what's right and then in season two he will use the z drive to defeat the arcane because obviously going back in time makes sense to defeat the arcane, go back to win it before it happens, so on and so forth. Um, I think it's a really shit way to do a story, but hey, we need Echo to have a time traveling device and this is the best way of making it work. And also with the implementation of the Z drive, my big theory is that Echo will see a sort of MCU style multiverse and it will kind of represent why the arcane law is so radically different from the League of Legends law. Echo will see it all. And he'll also see his family and his friends and everyone that he lost along the way living their lives in different places. And then at the end of the story, he and Jace will become the leaders of Zorn and Piltover respectively, bonded by their relationship to Heimerdinger. But anyway, if you like this video, please give it a like and also consider subscribing because I want to do more of these. They're really fun <laughs> and I will be doing it for season two as well. 
Thank you. Have a great day and have a great life.